welcome back to the CSS Podcast. Today we're talking about an upcoming experimental feature called state queries. These build on the foundations of container queries, leveraging a similar syntax pattern and requirements into a new query for asking about browser maintained internal state. And they're so, so, so useful for so many different reasons. There's lots of different ideas that we've had and talked to developers about implementing as a part of state queries, but there are a few that we're starting with to prototype. So we're going to talk about those in this episode. This concept of state queries unlocks a ton of use cases, and we're going to focus today on what's available behind a flag and canary for you to experiment with. So we're going to focus on scroll state. Nice. I'm so I'm glad you said uh, maintained internal state because I was as soon as you said state queries, I was like dad joke time. What state are you in, Yuna? Like, <laughs> oh, that's not that good. Oh, your sick cough came out. <laughs> oh, I know. Hey, that's I'm good. Not to... <laughs> that's how you know the joke is good. I got you to <laughs> giggle anyway. That's every cough today. Oh, well, yes. State queries are really cool. If you've ever wanted to know when an element was sticky and stuck, then this is your feature. If you ever wanted to know if a scroller is overflowing and showing scroll bars, or if an element is snapped, or even cooler, if an element is in view, if it's in the viewport. So while like scroll driven animations can expose some of these features, they're not as simple as a state query. So this syntax is both sweet, sweet sugar, but it's also in cases like stuck, not possible for other methods to achieve. Yeah, I really think this is also one of those missing features on the platform. Like we have, you know, size container queries to query a parent element size. We have style queries to query styles, especially uh, custom property values on um, an element that are being applied. And now we are going to have state queries to apply styles based on the state that an element is in. So that is awesome. I like this pattern as a way of styling things, making them more responsive, um, giving more information and logic to the components themselves. So again, just want to note that the features that we're talking about this episode are experimental and likely to change. Um, they'll probably shift, enhance, mature into something slightly different than what we share today. So this is one of those episodes that we want to give a warning about stability for. It is early stages for this feature. So sticky and scroll queries are enabled. If you enable a flag in Chrome Canary, it is the enable experimental web platform features flag, and you can try it out, but expect change for this feature. That's right. The syntax has already changed a couple of times since I've been using the prototype and since it was originally concepted, conceptualized. I don't know. There's a word in there that would be big and better than the ones I fumbled. Conceptualized. Conceptualized. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, and we're still discovering use cases. So like the original working group issue had a bunch of use cases, but we're, I'm certain there's more. So any, just start thinking as we list this out, what are some other scroll related, you know, state things that you would like to query? Yeah, that's a good one. Actually, that'd be great feedback. That's, uh, yeah, we're, I'm hoping that this is experimental and just sort of like expands the mind into the concept of a state query. And maybe we can see what other things we haven't covered yet. So like, just think to yourself, like, I've always really wanted to know, uh, or I've wanted X to be exposed about scroll. And we're listening. We really want to hear. So tweet us with the hashtag CSS podcast. We want to know and make sure that we have full coverage of internal scroll state exposed to CSS for use in really rich, meaningful UI UX feedback. Yeah. And this is also a learning episode for me. I'm catching up to what the latest status is with this early spec and the syntax. So I'm going to have Adam kind of teach me what the latest state of the art is for state queries. So <laughs> <laughs> with all those warnings and the overview out of the way, let's dig into the syntax. Rad. Okay. So with container queries, the container needs to specify what kind of container it is. And with container queries, you can specify size or inline size for a couple of examples. And to specify that, a you know, by writing this property, you're saying a subsequent container plans on asking this container about its width, like if you use inline size. And with state queries, the container type property is reused, but with a new value that you've never heard of before, which is called scroll dash state. So to set this, I would say container dash type colon scroll dash state. And this informs the browser that a container state query intends to ask this container about scroll related state and it can pre prepare accordingly. So is this pattern going to be used for other types of state queries? Because I imagine here, like we're talking about scroll state queries specifically, but there might be other types of state queries, like what anchor position state are you in as an example? And whatever else, you know, this is an expansive 
API. Yes, I'm really glad you brought up Anchor. I, I pitched the same thing. I was like, hey, we don't know which flip we're on. Are we flipped block? Exactly, or yes. flipped uh, block end, flip block start. This could be your way to identify that and maybe change where the little arrow is, right? Where we've been talking about how are we can handle this tether little triangle that points to the thing you're anchored to. And if it's flipping dynamically from top to bottom, in a way that I can't know. Yes, this, that's exactly that's internal browser state that we don't know that we need exposed to us in some sort of way. And this would be a method uh, of getting there. So yeah, expect container dash type to start to offer other things. And right now, so I think originally the spec said container dash type colon state or something generic, but they chose scroll dash state in a recent change to be more specific about what kind of state you're asking for and to open up the door for other kinds of state to be exposed. So yeah, great question. Cool, cool. All right, so next, what do we need to do now that we have container type scroll state? And I'm imagining this is on the parent, right? You can't query directly for container queries? That's correct also, yeah. So, which is something that, I mean, maybe we'll talk about it when we get into the JavaScript events a little bit for Snapped, but that is just one of the relationships with a container query is that the thing that you want to query about its state can't be the item itself that you're going to change. So this... I mean, just briefly, like while we're on this topic, yeah, think about like a stuck element. The stuck element, like let's say it's your nav bar, you're going to put container type scroll state on it, and then it's going to have position sticky top zero, right? So the thing that is being stuck in a thing needs to say that I'm a container type called scroll state. So that way you can ask me when I'm stuck or not. And then only children of that nav can know that. So this is going to be another wrapper scenario, just like uh, container queries. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's a little awkward because you could have these container state queries inside of a container query. So you could have like a container that's like inline size. And then inside of there, you've got something sticky inside of it. And you could also have multiple things for container type property, right? You could have multiple things that you're querying. So you could have a style query and a scroll state query. Yeah, I'm hoping that there's like a comma shows up. Yeah, and you start, or maybe no comma because we're like anti comma in CSS. But yeah, some sort of multiple <laughs> list of things that your container wants to query. I could see that being really useful. Yeah. Okay, cool. So now that we've got container type scroll dash state set on the element that is that we want to query. So this would also be your snap item, the thing that has scroll snap align on it, or the thing that is position sticky. The next step is to actually write the query, which uh, should sound really familiar if you've written a container query before. So you've got at container space, uh, optionally specify a name or not. Otherwise, it's just going to uh, recursively crawl the parent looking for the nearest container type that matches, which then you say space scroll dash state. So it's kind of like where you got a style query where it's at container and you write style. This one's at container scroll dash state. And inside of those parentheses, you can specify. In this case, we're sticking with the sticky example. Yeah, sticking with the sticky example is stuck colon top. So this lets the children of the container ask if this current selector is stuck in that container or not. And it works great. So here's a few other scroll state queries that are available to try in Canary. So if you pop up in Canary and you want to try this out, you've got at container space scroll dash state open parentheses snapped colon inline and your parentheses so it's like am i a scroll snap item or do i have a parent that is a scroll snap item that is currently snapped on the x or inline axis you've got at container scroll dash state open parentheses snapped colon block so that'd be a vertically snapped child or at container space scroll dash state open parentheses stuck colon top yes do you have to have the value here, like the property and value, or could you just say that you're snapped, period, X or Y, or that you are stuck anywhere, that you're in the sticky position? That's a lovely shorthand that I think you should go comment in the working group issue on. If that's not captured already, I would love that. One of the things when I'm writing these is I was like, oh man, my overflow X is auto, but then here I am snapped in line. I'm like, those don't quite match up. I'd rather it just kind of assumed and looked to see, is it snapped on any axis? Right. Yeah, I don't want to have to specify the axis. Yeah, it's a great idea. Okay, I just think it'd be easier to write from like a DevX perspective too. Yeah, it would look better too. It just sort of seems more slim. I think there's also an eventually we want to make snapped a pseudo class. You could just say colon snapped, mm -hmm. which also wouldn't be a container query, which means you could change the item that is snapped. It's also worth noting, just I know there's so many little offshoots here, but with the with snapped, you don't want to, for example, like transform the snapped element itself. This is like a big thing that happens with scroll uh, driven animations where you have scroll snap and scroll driven animation and you want to like scale in the snap item. 
No, 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 no. That changes the position of the element and it could unsnap it. Oh, yeah. It, could, it creates these really wonky scenarios. So you always want to, if you're going to transform something that's snapped, always do the child. Hmm. So this kind of forces you into that, which is kind of nice. But yeah, I recently had a carousel demo where you horizontally scroll that looked like the iOS app switcher. And yeah, if you transform the item that is stuck, it's it's no good. So you have to maintain a very flat list of snap children. This is also like the cover flow demo by Bramus. Mm -hmm. You keep all the snap children. They're just like straight boxes, untransformed, easy to snap to by the browser. But then you leverage all the scroll driven animations to control the children of that um, doing cool things what's inside of that box. That way you're not changing the box that the browser is trying to snap to. Got it. Okay. Cool. Okay. So that was snapped queries and stuck queries. Awesome CSS suggestion from Yuna. Hopefully we're inspiring more of y'all out there. You're going, it should be like this. We're like, yeah, let's do Good that. Good feedback. Yeah. Great. But here's a couple more scroll state queries that have been identified in the CSS working group issue as desirable. And one of them is overflowing. So at container scroll dash state overflowing. Is there a scroll bar or not? Ah, oh, this one's great. Bramus does have a demo that uses scroll-driven animations to flip a Boolean and a custom property that tells you this or not. But it's one of those ones where you're like, cool, I got custom properties with a value of one or zero. And now I can use a state query with that, or I can put it in a calc and do some funky math thingy. And it's like, not fun. Uh, this would be the fun way. You're just like, hey, container, are you overflowing or not? Because I'd like to adjust some things based on that. That would be so useful. Yeah to reapply some layout or some other kind of styling if something is overflowing, causing scroll bars. I definitely have heard this request before. Yep, that's a big one. And then the next one here uh, is scroll dash state in view. And now why this one's a little special, because we do have the view function in scroll driven animations, which allows you to animate as a timeline, as like the progress of you crossing this, this viewport. The in view container query would be binary you're either in view or not, which means you could trigger transitions this way. So as soon as it peeks its little head into view, mm. it bounces in, boing, 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 um, or does whatever it is that you want to do. And it's not tied to the user continuing to scroll. This is a trigger. This is like CSS intersection observer. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, all from, all from CSS declaratively here, perfectly in time, off the main thread, great looking transitions. And so this could be a way to unlock scroll triggered animations, which is something that scroll driven animations are not able to do at the moment. So that's really interesting. I, so all of these are examples that are a part of the scroll state world, right? So state queries that are scroll related, but I could see in view also being related to things like popovers and dialogues where it's in the viewport or it appears there mm, is um, visible. or things Ooh, yeah. is visible. Yeah. And, you know, we talked about anchor positioning and it's, that could be a whole other set of state queries for positioning logic, like layout state or position state. I could just really see this growing and growing. It does have a lot of potential. I'm feeling it too. But just to clarify, the two that are in Canary right now, that's just scroll state for stuck and snapped, right? That's correct. Yep. Okay, cool. All right, so now that we got like the two syntax basics out of the way, and we've kind of already described one of the challenging parent-child relationship scenarios, I do have an entire code block here to read out loud that I think will help people also kind of, hopefully you can mentally visualize nesting, uh, at which point this will be handy. Otherwise, it might not be very useful. And you can just send me a DM on Twitter and I'll send you links to some demos. But for this example, we're going to query for stuck. So imagine you have like a data list element with some DT children. And so this would be, hopefully you know what a data list element is and the DT element, which is like a header for multiple DT elements. Okay, so that DT, we want it to be sticky at the top of the scroller because let's say you have a whole lot of chapters inside of a section or something like that. So inside of that DT is a header element because we can't change the DT itself. We need to query the DT if it's stuck and then change children. So we'll put a header element inside of there since that's kind of what it looks like too. And here is, and then we're gonna animate it with box shadow. So if it's stuck, we'll make it look lifted. And then as soon as it's not stuck, the shadow will be removed. And the next thing that is stuck, will get a shadow. So we'll have this kind of like nice shadow example. So the styling goes uh, DT, and I'll open up my curly brackets, container dash type colon scroll dash state, position sticky, uh, top zero. And then you select the direct child header. You set transition box shadow for 0.5 seconds ease or whatever it is you want to do. And then at container space, scroll dash state colon stuck colon top. 
And then inside of there, you say the box shadow style that you want when it's stuck. And then as you scroll that thing and it sticks, it has a box shadow. And as it unsticks, the shadow goes away. So you have these triggered transitions based on a scroll state query. So this would behave like a scroll triggered animation, not like a scroll driven animation where the box shadow slowly fades in. It would be once you're in this binary position of stuck, is stuck at the top, then the transition begins, however you've defined it. Yep. And I've got a couple demos that I've built with these state queries. One of them is like a testimonial horizontal scroller that highlights the snapped item and animates the opacity to 100%. Okay. And yeah, it's triggered, right? So it's not like as you scroll, it's slowly fading in. It's like, no, you swipe it. It's now the snap item and it just glows into position for you, which is nice. Cool. Cool. Also, side note, scroll triggered animations is something that we will also be working on at some point in the future as a next step to scroll driven animations. So lots of different ways to do things, but this one's definitely based on state and that is unique for state queries. Yeah. Yeah, that's totally true. I'm looking forward to those scroll triggered animations too, because there's definitely times where those are nice. I also like one time scroll triggered animations, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool too. So I, well, yeah, we'll have to figure out how those all work. Yeah, we see those a lot. Okay, so then it's worth noting you can check for support for state queries with the following at supports CSS. So it's at supports space open up parentheses container dash type colon scroll dash state, right? So you're just saying, hey, do you know what scroll state is as the value of container type? And if the browser says yes, then you know you're good to go. Just again, to reminder, the features limited to snap queries and sticky queries, but more are planned to come and maybe even more after you provide us some feedback. So <laughs> let us know, listener, we're listening. There's a theme to this episode. <laughs> we want to hear from you. Um, and also speaking of other features to come, there is some really cool new JavaScript events for scrolling and snapping called Scroll Snap Chained and Scroll Snap Changing. Uh, the current scroll state snapped query follows the vibe of Scroll Snap Change, which triggers once scroll has rested but from CSS. So if you want to learn more about these features, Adam actually wrote a really great post that just went live about some of these new features, scroll snap change, scroll snap changing with some really great demos. Do you want to talk a little bit more about these and the article that you just put out? I've I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I had so much fun building the demos. They, there's a cool advantage of scroll snap changing and scroll snap change the JavaScript events because you can actually just, you can toggle a class on the element that was snapped. So, but like we described though, you don't want to transform that element. So you still have the same like considerations. It's like CSS has the safety built in and JavaScript, you're like off the rails, you can go nuts. <laughs> but the timings are really, really fun. So scroll snap change, like you said, it's like scroll has rested. You know, like, yeah. and then the thing fades in. But scroll snap changing is like really eager, which is kind of exciting. So like as you scroll and you're not even done lifting up your finger, the colors are changing or like the testimonials are fading in. Well, you have a cool ruler demo where as you're scrolling on the ruler, the values are changing. Yes, yes. And so that one, yeah, you can even, I use that one as a subsidizing input mechanism to a number input. So as you scroll it, I use scroll snap changing to see what items might be uh, rested on if the user lets go. And I take those values and I put them as the input value. So you're actively changing a number input based on the swiping you're doing on the ruler. Yeah. And one of the really cool things with the way that you can orchestrate these two functions together is like, let's say you do, uh, change state to something and you say this is the selected one and you would do that on scroll snap change so it means the user has completed their gesture scroll has rested this is the selected one and then with scroll snap changing as soon as the user starts to pan towards another value you can remove that class from that element very eagerly and then again restore the state of the selected one when the snap has completed changing so it's like you can uncheck the value as soon as the user is like interacting with the thing meaningfully and then recheck it as soon as it rests. So these things work together really well. And that's why the demos are so exciting because there's so many exciting things to, to build with it. And there's new choreography basically that you can do. And also for anyone that wants to make any demos at the bottom of the article, I listed like 10 ideas that I didn't build that I wanted to. So the article has like eight demos. And then at the bottom, I'm like, here's 10 more ideas. You should totally go. Go forth yep. and build. <laughs> Enjoy. What I really love about these two is I've never really thought about the interaction pattern of what happens as a confirmation of something changing, like the scroll snap change. You have this one demo where you're just you have like an HSL picker. And once you've selected the value, the, I guess, heading of H or S or L kind of flashes and bold and gets a little bit bigger. That subtle 
animation. It's so subtle, but it really gives the user some kind of confirmation that their value was settled on. Yeah. Like it was rested on. And that was so cool. I was, I was just thinking, we need more of that on the web. We need more of these like little subtle micro animations that give your user some kind of a uh, sense of completion or confirmation of an yeah, action. That's the, yeah, classic UX feedback where it's like the UI says, I heard you, user. Um, I saw your input. I've settled on it. I'm just confirming to you that you changed the H in this uh, picker. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love I it like too. That. And then, yeah, with Snap Changing. So Snap Changing is also really unique in that you literally could never have known this ever before this event. And then once we get it in the, the container query for scroll state, it'll also be something that like intersection observer cannot know this information. It's cool. You could sort of like sometimes figure out scroll snap change, like what item is currently snapped like that one you can know, but you didn't know what were potential targets from like a fling mm. or even as the user is just panning back and forth and snap is changing internally. It's deciding constantly, hey, if they let go, here's where I snap here. I love this, this job of like finding private internal state and going, no, I want to know because I know you know, and I want my users to know. That's like literally it. I'm like, browser, you know what's happening. No one else does. And that's not fair. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> we don't want to know. Uh, so yeah, y'all, if you can think of more stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, some, some great demos and examples on that blog post. We'll link that in the show notes. Definitely recommend you check it out. We're very much on a, a little tangent that that tends to happen on the show. <laughs> 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 we we go into tangents. Hey, we talked about JavaScript on the CSS podcast. Has that happened before? We should do it more. <laughs> we should. We'll make the, we'll make a new pod, the UI podcast. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I mean, view transitions. We are going to be talking about soon, and a lot of that is JavaScript too. That is a lot of JavaScript. Oh yeah, get ready for Bramus. We're gonna have our first guest specialist on here. It's gonna be awesome. I'm excited. Hope you're excited. Well, we also can't wait to hear what you think of these scroll state queries. Please do share any ideas that you have that aren't within the viewport of the CSS working group and be on the lookout for other state queries that are related to other features than scroll. We think these have a lot of runway to helping CSS react and provide UI feedback to users uh, for more interesting browser owned state scenarios. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Got any questions, comments, feedback, ideas? We'd love to answer them on the show or just tell the CSS working group about it. Just tweet us with that hashtag CSS podcast. Yeah, we'll have links for you in the show notes to the CSS working group issues that you could comment on, demos to check out. But for now, we'll see you online. I'm at Yuna. That's at UNA. I'm at Argyle Link, and your question could help a lot of people. If you like the show, please give us a review on whatever podcast app you're using. That's our only ask for you, or to share this with a friend or coworker, because those reviews help other people discover our show and help us have more time to deliver better content for you. Indeed. Thanks, y'all. Looking forward to your questions. We'll see you next time. 